listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of New York City After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Real Housewives of New York City After Show. Hey everybody, uh, Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another After Buzz After Show for The Real Housewives of New York City, season five, episode number six, called I'm UK, You're UK, which I'm assuming is supposed to be I'm okay, you're okay, but I'm looking at it more like I'm yucky, you're yucky. <laughs> <laughs> that just seems more appropriate. I like it. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Kristen Carney, and I have uh, two very lovely co-hosts with me tonight, which um, I would let them introduce themselves if they would prefer. Hi, I'm Molly Harper, and you can follow me on Twitter, and you can ask me questions or comments, whatever, at Molly Comedy, and that's Molly with a Y, Molly Comedy. Awesome, Yerman. Uh, and fantastic. How are you doing, everybody? Um, I'm Yerman Gur. You can follow me at Twitter on Twitter, at Yerman Gur, Y-E-R-M-A-N-G-U-R. And um, yes, so uh, I'm Kristen at Kristen Carney uh, on Twitter, so follow me as well if you guys want. If you want to tweet to us, during the show, we have our phone sitting next to us, illegally, I think. But do it. We're ready to go. If you have anything to say, let us know, and we can bring it up. Or you can also call in at 424-256-1729. Um, but tonight, we're going to be talking about the sixth episode of the season, which I have to say, I think was the funniest episode thus far. Concur. It was <laughs> funny. I was, like, I never do the knee slap, <laughs> but I did a couple knee slaps. Did you? Good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to tell us what those parts were. Yeah, right? I was, yeah, yeah okay. we're going to get like, to uh, Molly and I are like, uh-huh, yeah, and nothing. <laughs> well, I don't want to jump forward too much. However, okay. it was the dinner with Heather, okay. and it was just so uncomfortable okay. and so yeah. awkward. It, you don't have to tell us now. I just want to make sure you yeah, do tell us at some point. it wasn't intentionally funny. Sure. I just found it incredibly awkward, so I just had to get the energy out and the knee slapping. <laughs> Luckily, there was no one next to me. I would just slap them. Fantastic. So, um... I just want to say thanks to everyone on iTunes as well before we get started. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you guys want to do us a favor and comment and rate, that would be awesome. You've heard us probably say that before if you've listened in the past, and we really appreciate it, and we read and respond to all of them. So um, please, if you'd like to rate and comment, that would be excellent. So anyway, on to the episode. Yeah. Um, we open up with um, the women arriving in London. In London, finally, sl slowly collapsing. <laughs> I love because the last time we talked about it, you were like, "They're going from New York to London. They're going from a dark, <laughs> dreary place to a dark, dreary place." Which right, right. Cracks me up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just didn't think it would change the atmosphere between the women at all. You know, it would kind of be if you're on the beach or something, you're wearing something different, you're acting a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, the atmosphere really, I think, depend will base a lot of your own decisions. Well, it's like the less clothes you have on, the more stuff can go on. Like if they had been in Miami, maybe. But like they're bundled right. up in London. What's really right. going to happen? And the problem with London also is that everyone there is so polite yeah. that there's <laughs> going to be no run-ins Is that with a anybody. problem really? Is it's that a what, huge it's, problem. Is that a problem when it's you're a, too polite? Darn it, yes. I hate that. <laughs> it's a huge polite for these circumstances. Uh -huh. Or it's a huge issue because I'd like to see, you know, a little run-in or something. Everyone's just polite <laughs> and happy and... And reserved. Yeah, and reserved. I'm sure they're not necessarily happy yeah. to see, like, the filming. You know, right. I think they're too cool for school in that sense that they're not going to get excited over it. I, I didn't really see that much of a difference in the background. Honestly, no wonder that uh, the whole New York area is called New England. It just looked like the same diff. They were in the city. It looked like New York. They were in the country. It looks like upstate New York. I'm just saying. I, well, New York is a, is a city based in England, so New York is... The newer version of New York. <laughs> oh. Except if you go to New York now, you're going to see yeah. upstate this New York. This is all it's coming together for me York. now. He's all not from this country, so he doesn't know. All coming together for me now. <laughs> I'm now getting it. So okay, so they're in the they're in the airport. They get um, ushered to their to their penthouse. Right. Yeah. Um, with it, the nicest dr uh, driver slash chauffeur ever. Right. I mean, to put up with the banter, you have to be pretty calm. I have to say one thing upon their arrival. Um, when Son Sonia was wearing that hat, she looked like Diane Keaton. 
She oh, looked she, ridiculous. She definitely looked like Diane and Keaton. And she should never wear that hat yeah. again. Like a porcelain <laughs> Diane Keaton. Yeah. yeah. That will wake up in the middle of the night from her porcelain state and just stab you. That's what her face kind of says to me. Her wow. face, I think I said it's a, it's before, a, she looks like um, Paris Hilton's mother. Yes, yeah. It's almost a, I, I think Sonia's pretty, she but is. it's like this almost killer porcelain doll face. Like, hmm. Like it's kind of demented a little bit, but yet likable at the same time. Yeah. Um, so we start off in the car with Carol's beef with the accents. With the faux <laughs> British accent. Luann was doing it the whole time. <laughs> she wanted to murder her. <laughs> it was fantastic. She's like, yeah, on British people. Right. <laughs> and Ca Carol said, are we going to have to listen to this faux British accent the whole trip? Really? You know, and, and it's just, again, I think it's Luann's insecurities that are coming out. Here's the thing. Well, speaking of accents, I also find it really irritating how Luann pronounces Sonia's name. She calls her Sonia <laughs> all yeah. the time. She yeah. says Sonia. Well, like she's European. D did you hear the way she pronounced Switzerland? It's like you almost don't even hear her say it. It's like Switzerland. <laughs> it just like brushes by. It's like a windstorm. When, she she was when they She's were like, walking through the streets yeah. in London and she mentioned her bit at the in Switzerland. She did. Well, because yeah. she had to even out Carol's living in London. Because she said so. the neighborhood reminded her of her neighborhood in. Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, make a pronunciation, please, at That's least. Funny. Do us a favor. Um, and then, okay. Well, here's the thing, though, with what you were just saying. I think part of me feels bad for Luann because I think she so desperately is trying to be one of the girls and fit in yeah. and make jokes and be light because she is being light the whole series so far she's not really bringing much drama to the table mm -hmm. I think she's just trying to make friends with everybody but she's just so awkward at it yeah it's a little bit like the moms trying to be to fit in with their daughters and not kind that I'm it, saying yeah. Luann's older but it's almost that unnatural you know almost it seems like there's a divide a little bit where mm -hmm. Luann you know, because she's more sophisticated, you see her more reserved. That's her natural state. Yeah. It doesn't really look that natural when she's easygoing and loose. But, I mean, she doesn't bother me necessarily. Yeah. I think she pulls on other people's, you know, annoying strings more than mine. She doesn't right. bother me that much. Um, but it is unnatural. It just feels a little bit like the babysitter is, is wants to have fun with the little girls. Hmm. Um, but, so, basically, they're waiting around for Heather's meetings or whatever to be done with yeah. so that they can meet up and have some Join dinner, dinner and function. I almost thought that was a span of two days. Felt like it. Yeah. So <laughs> I can like, imagine they were tired. Did nothing go on in London? Like they had nothing else to show us? Right. Well, they, they, they went of, shopping because they had nothing to do all yeah. day long because there's nothing to do in London except shop because God knows it's not an extremely old country with wonderful sights this year. Right, right, right. But that's just me. I'm, I mean, <laughs> right. they went ugly shoe shopping in London. Right. Those shoes were so ugly. I will say it was really funny when Sonia, um, she looked at the, um, there were like napkins or no, there were, um, oh God, it was, um, I wrote it down and it's, I'm not going to find it quick enough. Um, Oh, there was a like a needle, a and, sewing kit. Yeah, needle and thread that matched bowls. Right, and she's like, "Yeah, everyone needs a sewing kit that matches a cereal bowl." Yeah, which I thought was funny because it was sitting right in there, and it was a good observation. I wouldn't usually peg her to be able to pick that stuff out. Right. Um, so I thought that was funny, but she looked at the shoes with like a million price tags, you know, marked down, mm -hmm. and she's like, "These I can afford." But how poor is she really? Right. That's what I wanted. So know. that's what I had a huge hard time b buying into is they're them complaining about. Um, I mean, I get that she doesn't have 75 um, servants now, and she just has three interns. She doesn't have, like, ten properties. She has one five-story apartment house in <laughs> Manhattan. So I, I just had a hard time buying the fact that, like, I, can, I can't deal with this expensive stuff. I'm like, I, I have don't a understand. feeling that all she got in her divorce was the house. Yeah. Which, like, I've heard of divorces like that where the husband just doesn't want to deal with you, and he's like, just take the house. And, and just and don't bother up. me again. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think that's what happened because she kind of poor mouths herself all the time. But the other thing that I thought was weird is she talked about when she was rich and married and had houses all over the world and whatever. She said she never flew. Um, what did she say? She never or she never stayed in a penthouse. Before. Right. She never stayed in a penthouse before, but she stayed in she Barbara Streisand uh, room. She stayed in the Frank Sinatra room. She said bar she said two Sinatras. I thought she said I stayed in Frank Sinatra's room and like Barbara Sinatra. I thought that's what she said. But what yeah. room? What is she talking I don't, about? I don't know. Well, you know I, I'm like sure a, there's like somewhere. The, it's like the Mr. Papa Giorgio suite in Vegas from, from Vegas Vacation. It's like the suites that they have that they title after people. It's like the special presidential room. They have a Barbara Streisand room somewhere and a Frank Sinatra room somewhere. But and I don't think she said Barbara Streisand. I think she said Barbara she Sinatra. 
It's she was possible. confused. <laughs> I don't Unless know. I was confused, I thought that's really weird. But yeah, so, but she hasn't stayed in the penthouse. But she yeah. had seventy five servants. So at no point in time did they get the nicest room <laughs> yeah, in the. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's like you weren't doing a good job of being a trophy wife. Then. Yes, exactly. Because you should have gotten those penthouses, girl. Yeah, I mean, but I, with this stuff, obviously they're not making tons and tons and tons of money from being on the housewives. But they have to be making something to where if she sees a pair of, a pair of shoes in London, she can buy herself a pair of shoes. I mean. I, I just don't understand, you know, I'd like to know more about her financial situ her financial woes, and right. I put that in quotations yeah. because for some people that would be their financial bliss. Yeah, right? I mean, it's yeah. not like they're in New York eating at Chili's. You know, every place that they go to is like the in place to go to. Even their lunches are probably $100 a pop. It's not a cheap way to live. So I don't understand how the exchange rate could be so gargantuan, which it isn't, that all of a sudden they can't afford a $300 pair of Jimmy Choo's. I just... Did I just reference the worst price ever for what is it like eight hundred thousand dollars for Jimmy <laughs> Choo's? Is that the problem? I think everyone's wearing um, um, Christian Louboutins now. Lou so sorry, Jimmy sorry. Choo is a little out. out is, of shouldn't it just I, be am it. amazing that I actually know Jimmy Choo and Manola Blahniks? <laughs> Honestly, just the fact that I could say that out loud. Anyways, but yes. Well, we're all wearing them. We just can't see them under this table. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, we, we all got them on for sure. Believe it. Um, and uh, okay, so then we get into Carol who. Tells us that she lived in Notting Hill, Julia uh -huh. Roberts. Oh, yeah. She goes, I lived in this neighborhood called Notting Hill. And we're all like, we've <laughs> oh, seen that right. movie a thousand well, times. Exactly. Oh. exactly. Uh, but is it really a movie that needs that needs explanation? Like, don't most people know about Notting Hill? Well, it's when a you very well-known area in London. Well, it just seems like when you say Notting Hill, from now, from now on, from the point of the movie, you right. kind of just say, oh, you know, I lived in Notting Hill, you know, the movie. It's yeah. not like you can say Notting Hill independently anymore. Yeah. That's what it would seem to me. She said, I lived in a neighborhood called Notting right. Hill. Right. It was like we were As all she was educating. Yes. Yeah. She's like, I live in a neighborhood called upstate New York or uh, what? No, a neighborhood like what? Brooklyn. I live yeah. in like um, <laughs> Park Avenue. It's a neighborhood called Park Avenue. Right. It's like we're aware. We've got well, it. Right. <laughs> Maybe she was too busy during her princess time to watch Julia Roberts movies on <laughs> right, replay. Right, right. I was like, I can quote lines. I'm just a girl looking at a boy. <laughs> we all know the movie, Carol. <laughs> oh, That's God. funny. Well, so we have, you know, we talked about the pronunciation of Switzerland with, with Luann. But <laughs> Say it again, please. Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the beginning of the little competition that I think we're going to start seeing now between Luann and Carol, which I think will definitely grow as the episodes continue, as we saw in the previews. <clears throat> um, but that was just the first little piece of it. And it's interesting to see Carol respond a little bit because it doesn't seem like anything really seems to shake Carol. Yeah. But this seems like it's going to be the first thing that's going to shake her a little bit. It's getting on her nerves. Well, she she seemed to be shaken from like the plane ride over. They're in that car ride and she's already like, okay, um, they've just been talking and talking and Luann's just, you know, I thought Sonia could talk forever, but Luann's just keeping up with her and right. I, they're, they're still talking. This well, is like, amazing. Putting Carol in a flight, on a flight with those women in the car for this many hours is like putting a dude who watches football and scratches his balls in the same scenario. It's like hell, I feel like. Because Carol <laughs> yeah. just, you know what I mean though? Carol's more of that type where she's more of like the tomboy in a sense where these women would, you could see them getting under her skin like the way a dude would be like, ladies, shut the hell up kind of, <laughs> kind of deal. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so I can see her, her, you know, her hair curling at the ends just going ah right. she's like i can't stand this i have to take off my bra i'm gonna <laughs> right. go braless and, and, and but i'm gonna keep my fingerless gloves on right to remain right. comfortable right i need the support in yeah. my palms <laughs> well ridiculous you know i mean that's the huge difference between carol and the rest of the women is yeah. that these women make fun of her in a sense or pick on her for not wearing a bra um i mean a lot of women would you know because a bra i think is commonplace anywhere outside your house yeah but <laughs> You know, they're they're so primped and, and clean cut and put together that someone not wearing a bra is a huge topic of conversation for them. Yeah. And um, Carol can pull it off. First of all, she doesn't have huge bazongas like <laughs> flopping around where you have, have to worry about it. Like her boobs are the same size as mine. If I wear a bra, you can't even tell. You know. Okay, so can I make a? <laughs> He's like trying to change. So <laughs> here's yeah, I'm like He's these like, mental okay, images so. are conflicting with one thought I'm trying to form in my head, which is at fifty some odd year or whatever, late forties, fifty year old woman. She's, shouldn't an, you she's just, gonna be fifty next year. Can't can a case be made that at a fifty years old you should just wear a bra out of propriety? I mean, uh, whether or not it's like whether or not you have big breasts or you have small breasts, like shouldn't you just at that point be like, it's time I put on a bra. Yeah, probably. But again, yeah. Carol, like at this point, I feel like, you know, she has, I think her net worth is like $50 million. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's like, she can who go gives a, 
you know if if you're already wherever you are you uh-huh. can kind of like i feel like throw expectations of the wind a little bit well clearly because everybody else was bundled up for a, like a fall day out in notting hill and she looked like <laughs> she just came back from a day at private school <laughs> she had like the little school <laughs> the what do you call it the the, the 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 knickers or like what do you call it the stockings that only came up to like halfway <laughs> up her thigh and these short boots and everybody else is like pants and boots yeah. and like little ladies more. and gentlemen though mean, <laughs> meanwhile the man who is speaking right now has his shirt unbuttoned pretty far and has no undershirt on oh yeah so, that's, that's okay. my David Hasselhoff look ladies and <laughs> gentlemen yeah he's Turkish though that's I'm true. Turkish <laughs> I'm European we do these things we expect Hello. it we expect it yeah well um, if you guys want to buy any bras you know where you can do it you can do it on After Buzz <laughs> that's TV that's right just click on the Amazon logo and start your shopping from there we just get a little kickback you've heard us say it probably now a few times if you've been listening and uh, it just helps us out here After Buzz to keep the lights on and the microphones working um, so do that and tell your friends um, yes thank you thank you um, so after they have kind of gotten the settling in thing, we cut to Heather in her meeting. And Heather is oh my god, my worst nightmare for a boss. <laughs> and when she stood up and said, everyone go around the table and tell me why you love yummy baby. It's like, because oh you pay god. me to? That's the <laughs> only reason I give <laughs> a shit. Did you practice that? That was uncanny <laughs> she good. <did> too. <laughs> No, but like your voice, it was like Heather was next oh to me. Oh my god, it's been ringing in my head since she said it. That she was, was well, so obnoxious. well done. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Thank well, you. if you saw her, she Thank was. You. It seemed like she went from kind of straight lace oh to god. all of a sudden just like she was in Cancun. <laughs> it was like the tra- there was no transition at all. It caught me really off guard, and that's the point where <laughs> I, I saw my knee It was either it was either, <laughs> it was either it was either Cancun or sh- or later on it turned into Showtime at the Apollo. Is what is she did, like? All of a sudden, she started Death throwing Comedy out. Jam. Yeah, like she was throwing out words. Oh, that, urban. Yeah, yeah, she's urban. Ur- urban. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? What did I say? <laughs> all I know is it was just weird. All of a sudden, it just she, oh apparently she, a few drinks and she gets very loose. Well, no. How about the very first meeting when she, you know, yeah, when they're meeting. in that, um, like, like, uh, what do you call it? The room, the showroom. When they're in the showroom, and she said, um, you know, you guys. What she say? I need y'all up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Come join me. I can't do this on my own. <laughs> so like a bunch of a bunch of people, like, it, they were like Italians, like French <laughs> people, like what is she saying? I do not understand. The up in here, we are we are here sitting. Why I don't. Did she do? The thing about Heather that I realized after this episode is I would actually like her if she stopped with the urban thing, right? Like trying to talk like that. It's so irritating. It's so unbecoming on her because it just sounds so fake and forced and unnatural. It sounds so nineties. It does. It sounds like. I, she was in college, probably maybe in the early 90s, and she's like, that's how I got on with my sisters. It's a variety. Like, I don't know. It's just, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> but the thing is, I realized I would <laughs> like her. I really would like her if she, if she got a nose job and if she stopped doing that. Right. Well, I would. <laughs> I know. I, the thing is, in, hmm. in her interviews, she needs one. in her so, interviews, yeah. when she's not trying so hard, yeah. she's I, she is likable, and her points seem to make sense. Well, yeah, and I mean, that, was, that interview was, she was concise to the point. She was coherent. She made her point. It was like, she, she yeah. was even, great. Even See, Carol was like, yeah, I didn't really need to be here. She was just fine. She nailed it. She was right. eloquent, which she never is when she's putting right. on that act. Right. But I didn't mean the on-camera interview, but she was good at that. But I mean her interviews for oh, oh, Housewives. Sorry, for Housewives. Okay. When she's got the little fishtail braid, braid yeah. she just looks, you know, she looks normal or yeah. not unlikable. Right. And she speaks, you know, like someone that is like, okay, it's a human. Yeah. But that's all of a sudden when she gets around everybody, it just kind of... It's, I think it's her insecurity. It's her cover. It's totally a cover. I think maybe she feels uncomfortable in her leadership or something, or she doesn't know if people like her, and it's her way of trying to be like, look at me, I'm fine. Yeah, but again, the people she'd probably been interacting with for so long in the that urban industry, that's yeah. how she had to talk with them. So I don't think she's learned to talk to them. Can you imagine, Can you imagine talk- talking to Kelly yeah. Rowland like that? I was just that? saying, like, did, you, did she have to talk to them? I mean, like, what she would, uh, I mean, Sean talk about Combs not and, fitting and in. Beyonce be like, yo, P. Diddy, what's up, baby? How you doing? Yeah. Like, he, he would look at her and be like, girl, you crazy. I can't, I'm like, I don't know what he'd say. He'd be like, don't you ever talk well, like that to me. Same, I'm a businessman. It's the same kind of thing. Like, I'm half Irish, half Italian. When I get around my Italian family, I'm like, hey, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm like a tough guy. And then when I'm with my Irish family, I'm just normal. Yeah, but that's fa- 
No, but are you laughing at it time? It's like you. It's like you, I almost spit my water. It's out. like you take. <laughs> He's you horrible. T- you take on what you think is going yeah. to be more hip in the situation. Like when I'm with my Italian side family, I think they're super cool, uh-huh. so I want to fit in with them. But I'm not really like them. So you say like mutarel? Yeah, well, kind of it's a little Susan. bit. I, you know, my dad starts to talk more with his hands, uh-huh. then everyone starts to talk more with their hands, and it's like a group think kind of thing. Okay, now and that's probably why she. Great. Now the only problem is that you do that around your family. So if she was with a bunch they of people. Me. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, if they if she was around those people still, I could understand why she defaults to that mode. But she's in a group of people that wouldn't know what up in here meant if they <laughs> fell up into some. I don't. I'm just. I don't even know how to make that analogy. But a good point though is I don't. I I make you a bet Heather never speaks that way in front of her family. Can you imagine in front of her Jewish husband going, baby? <laughs> <laughs> just know, wake up in the morning like, and be like, baby, holla. <laughs> I just, but they're like professional, well-to-do Jewish husband in New York City. I just right. can't imagine. He'd right. be like, who are you? Yeah, like a rabbi wouldn't marry no. them. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know. I think she just learned it and I think she turns it on when she's uncomfortable or she's not thinking about it and it's her way of connecting or something yeah. with right. people. I don't see why she would need to feel the need to be insecure about anything. I mean, at this point, she's what? It's a four-year-old company that's gone global at this point. That's a pretty decent accomplishment. I kind of want to work for her. Yeah, I mean, it's in a sense, it's it's it's, it's you know she came from wherever she came, but she obviously she's created a business. It's gone global. She's obviously able to hold these functions in uh, you know other foreign countries and wonderful venues. I mean, it was it wasn't like just any old little hotel. It was the house of Dior. So she's obviously doing well for herself. What does she got to feel insecure about? I, it's I, just women. I think when women get around women, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. Like I bet if Paris Hilton's around Kim Kardashian, there's a little tension. You know, hmm. it's like they're all the way up here, but it doesn't matter when when it's like you're too close. You know, when you're too, if we have too much the same, you want to see who's better in that world. But okay, um, so we see her at the dinner now. Oh my god! Which progresses more knee slapping for me because <laughs> it's it's like you get this when you work for a company. You're like when you own the company, you're excited because it's your baby. Right. But when it's when you have employees. It's not their baby. They're babysitting your baby. And tell me if you've ever babysat a baby where you're like, I want this to be my baby. No. no. You want to leave and go away as soon as you're and out have your of own that baby. baby's world. Right. So it's yeah. like she expects this support from everybody. It's like basically her walking up to someone, showing them her infant child who has a cleft palate and is like, <laughs> tell me how great Whoa. my baby is. And they're all like... <laughs> this, just like, got awk- this just got awkward. <laughs> no, but it's like it's not a cute baby necessarily. <laughs> your analogy is, but it's right because yeah. then they'll all go. No, your baby is cute. Yeah, she's fishing for compliments. Right. I understand. So doing it's, that is so off-putting with the whole company. It's so weird. It reminds me of like one time my boss asked me if every day I could cre- greet her with a hug and a smile just to show that I was happy working there. <laughs> I was like. You want me to <laughs> smile and hug you every time you walk through the office door? And she's like, yeah, I think it'd be a great way to start the day. I was like the same thing. like It's sexual harassment or something. Yeah. Kind of. Well, I was just like, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to work here, but I'm not going to like jump up and down every day. I mean. Right. We're human beings. Yeah. yeah. So to kind it's not of. My, it's not my business. And, and I mean, she is dealing with people who are from other countries that may not have that type of behavior right. in their repertoire. So when she's saying to this Italian man in these beautiful glasses to stand up and tell her why he loves <laughs> yummy, it's yeah. like, you know, they didn't, some of them you could tell were really awkward and I was well, they glad. Kept, they kept showing that one dude in the glasses, he, just, he looked like a deer caught in headlights. He just kept, They kept showing him, he was just looking somewhere and constantly like in this fixed position. I'm just bugging out with my eyes, but and why they were kept they all, going back to him. Why were they all smelling the roses? Because I really <laughs> wanted to say like, wake because up and smell the roses. Because she didn't give them them food yeah right. but it was weird because they were all i've never actually seen people because it's like you hear that phrase like wake up and smell the roses like i wanted to say to heather like wake up and smell the roses here people are hungry and people they're bored hungry. and well, they're literally smelling roses i had a theory as to why she didn't feed them because i thought yummy tummy would look better on you if you weren't actually eating anything <laughs> right. you didn't have anything yeah. to hold right. in right right so i was like maybe it was part of her ploy yeah because her employees were pretty skinny yeah. yeah, I just didn't understand yeah. the the function of the evening. I, I was led to believe it was a dinner party, but it sounded more like she was treating it like a corporate retreat. Like, tell everybody get up. Th- like, those are the icebreakers that you do in corporate. It was a sales cor- thing. Right. It was like I want everyone to be excited about the product. I want to so bring they everyone can go back together. to the country, and they'll be excited to try to sell. But it. I thought that's what you have those meetings for, and then you basically have a dinner where you just let people relax, eat, have, have a drink, well, yes, that's and have social do. conversation to say thank you for going through all these meetings. Your meetings are were like Italy up in the house. You go, you bring <laughs> Italy up, and they tell you this is whatever that guy was saying he was it was i, I had to rewind he's like this is i'm the queen no i'm saying about the the guy that came up from belgium i think who said oh, like this okay. this one piece is oh. my most number one winning piece this gets me into all the stores like that's the time where you guys talk and, and suck up and talk about a yummy tummy and then at the dinner
dinner party, everyone get, stands around and says, thanks for coming, really great time, I love London, and has some food. Yeah. Right, right. Some fun. I mean, people are going to truly get excited about your product if you're not forcing them to get excited about right. your product. Right, right. So it just was so forced. And then my favorite was when Luann was like, well, I'm going to stand up, because Carol yeah. didn't stand up. And it was almost like she's proving a point. And when, and when she stood up, her... It was so uncomfortable because she was she really had nothing to say. She said, "I'm happy to be here with all of you yummy people." Yeah. And then she sat back down. <laughs> I you know, though, I have to say Kristen, yeah. it didn't bother me again because I just think she's trying to do the right thing. Definitely. It just struck yeah. me funny though her the cadence of the way she said it with all of you yummy people yeah. Yeah. like it just yeah. was kind of she clearly had nothing to say but right. that, that was the thing in Luann and Sonia's defense and as much as I'm a fan of Carol I actually thought that was the wrong time to decide you had a strong opinion about uh, how you like these functions to go because in the end you are Heather's guests yeah. you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. there under the guest umbrella mm -hmm. and obviously it's not expected that you well Carol shouldn't have expected that she get up and, and list like 10 things she loves about yummy. I mean, she just should have just gotten up and be like, I just want to thank Heather for inviting us here. Yeah. I'm really happy to be here and, and, and I'm having a wonderful time. Whereas Luann actually, yes, that dig was, <laughs> I don't know what was up with that dig. It was such a blatant dig, but she had nothing to say. She still figured something out to say. And then Sonia actually said like a nice little eloquent little speech she and did. thanked everybody, sat down. I was like, wow, that's... That's cool. They actually went through the motions. I'd actually thought Carol picked the wrong time well, to, I, yeah, to yeah. decide to impose a like, uh-uh, I ain't standing. Like, Dude, yeah. stand. What's it going to matter? You're right. It made her look immature. A little bit. A little mature and a little bit um, pretentious. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, I'm above Which doing is what I'd stuff. expect Luann to do. If anything, yeah, I, was like yeah. the, uh, I, was, I would think Luann was like, I don't stand, you know, or something like that. Right, but right, right. She wasn't I, that way. I definitely, can, I definitely know where you guys are coming from, yeah. but in that moment, doing just being forced to do something so... Definitely. It's still awkward. Uncomfortable is just oh, yeah. so uncomfortable. Comfortable, and I, I, you know, I think I probably wouldn't have wanted to stand. I probably would have because I don't have the balls not to. Right. But it took balls for Carol. But it, they weren't the right balls necessarily. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. By the way, the whole time I was wondering to myself, when in her on-camera interview is Carol is Carol ever going to say how annoying she finds Heather? Because I would think that she would think that, and then she wrote back. So she, I tweeted, and, her. and this is all on Twitter, right? Yeah. Right. She wrote back. Only when she talked too much, and even then I just zone out. L, so I guess that means Luann, is Penelope only not funny? I don't know who Penelope is. Penelope? I have no idea who Penelope is. Penelope. Penelope, right. If you're chat, I thought well, it like Penelope. Their, uh, comments, throw in some iTunes yeah, comments. Yeah, if people. you know who that is, please. Who is Penelope? It's like, where in the world is Carmen Sandiago? Right. Yeah, I don't know, but I did see that comment to you on Twitter that... Um, about, I thought maybe she was Heather. a housewife that was in the last season because I didn't watch last season. Oh, so it's, I didn't she's know. not? No. Penelope isn't one of the, No? No. If someone is, knows, please let us know. Yeah, but okay. I, I don't know who Penelope is. Interesting. I, the only Penelope anyway, I but knows. I thought that was funny because I thought, you know, Carol's cool, right? Uh -huh. Right, right. And I asked her about that too. I was like, were you considered cool growing up? And she said, no. She goes, I think that I'm just the easygoing one. Right, right. But she's definitely making up for her years of geekiness with trying to be cool now. Yeah. But I well, just if you do, if you do go on Carol's website, there's a picture of her from high school and she just looked like a nice, pr pretty girl. Like she didn't look like, a she geek. didn't look like a geek. She didn't look like she was super cool. You know, she just looked like yeah. middle of the road, nice person. So yeah. that's what I would imagine. And just now thought, like, she's worth 50 How million. can she not find, I mean, she found Luann putting on that British accent annoying. How could she not find Heather annoying? With all the, yeah, girls. She's a, she definitely <laughs> like has. I think if we haven't seen it, I feel like we haven't seen it yet. So I hope she does I get annoyed with her. Yeah, I think it'll come out. Because I think I we'll lose if, all she's, respect. if she's <laughs> breaking down a little bit with Luann, I think she definitely can break down with Heather. Because Heather's pro point of view, I feel like it's almost even bigger than Luann's or, mm -hmm. you know. Or I don't know, gritting on your nerves. I think could come easier from Heather. Yeah. Right. Um, so <laughs> now we cut to Ramona and Aviva, who have been right. missing all the terribly action. from this episode. And I don't think they were really missing out on anything in London. No, at all. I mean, even the girls' night at the penthouse was lame. So, yeah. real quick, real quick question for you all. Now, you're ladies. If you were in a penthouse in London, but you were in a penthouse in, in London, being the operative word, would you take one out of your three nights to just sit at home and do what you could do in your five-story mansion no. in the Upper East Side or Upper West Side? No. Whatever they are? Probably upper not. Side. Probably not, but I feel like these women have so much time and opportunity to party and go wherever they want to that if they want to take a night in they have a gazillion more nights that they can go out and party hmm. oh can we say something about the night in 
Yes, please. definitely. Okay, so is there a specific? I think it was Carol. Can we say something no, about the night Heather. in? It was Heather. <laughs> it was Heather. <laughs> oh, yeah. Silence. I was no, like, was, is this the part the where you thing, say something? <laughs> okay, I want to say two things about the night in. One, when Heather name dropped, she said, my friend Bobby owns Polaroid. Yo. Yo. <laughs> First well, of all, name dropping Polaroid may have been cool in like 1987. <laughs> right. Well, no, but Polaroid like, is still used every day in fashion. Yeah. Right. right. She made a point to say that. But yeah. like, Luann from that was inspired to write a new song. And it serious? was. Yeah, she said yeah, that. Yeah, she, she said, said she's it. inspired to write a new song. She said instead of like say chic c'est la vie, yeah. she wants to do chic c'est la gangster or something. Yeah, gangster chic. Gangster chic. Yeah. What is this? Okay. It's, yeah. That was annoying. And then the second, okay, I have one other thing. When they played the game oh. about like where have you had sex, yeah. like the most risque thing, they, all they showed was Luann saying she did it on a ping pong table, which I was like, really? That's all the juice you have? And then secondly, for a classy woman, as she likes to call herself, you're never supposed to talk about where you've had sex. Right. 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 So she broke her own rules. Right. Yeah, the she, Countess doth broken her rules. Well, she'll <laughs> reference a social etiquette rule from a social etiquette book, and then she'll... She did a dinner. She did a dinner. She made sure to be like, yeah, um, I usually don't, we don't, it's not polite to start unless everyone's at a table. And then she's like, I took a little bite. I don't know. <laughs> right. No right, one saw me. Right. And then at the end of it, she's like, ping pong table, I got it all. Right. And they're pretty <laughs> sturdy, like, she said. Um, she's, <laughs> I mean, she's, she's not a small woman. To have sex on a ping pong table? Well, it's kind of it's, like, it's not the most sturdy thing. No, right. I have a ping pong table in my house I could barely handle the ball <laughs> Chris is like I have a ping pong table in my house I can tell you personally that that is not comfortable you're like whoa whoa wait a minute no you didn't hear my punchline they could barely handle the ping pong ball I love yeah. it which That's is made awesome. out of like air um, yeah that that night we, I don't think we really saw much exciting the glasses oh the glasses yeah the, the glasses ugliest was, thing Heather get rid of those right and, and Heather said which was I thought brushed over because I think she really <laughs> insulted the women because I really truly think she doesn't think they know fashion right, right. and she said you Are guys you wouldn't know fashion if it like, hit you in the head or something like that oh no wow. she said something even better should I do it now I was saving it for what they should have said later no sa yeah save it yeah, for save later it. yeah save it for later. later but yeah that was awesome yeah so I definitely think that she got away with saying that but the women, um, there's there's a party going on somewhere. I don't think anyone else on the air can hear it, no, but we can we hear, hear a little it. party happen next, like, next door. <laughs> um, but Heather definitely got away with saying that, and I was surprised that no one said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, they all take themselves so seriously that I thought they would have caught her on that to insult them that way. And Carol seems like definitely the most fashionista of them all. Yeah. Yeah, Carol, like we talked about last week, Carol is kind of like the undercover Carrie Bradshaw. Big time. Totally big time. It's exactly who she's trying to be. <laughs> yeah. Have you looked at That's her website? Honestly. Okay, on her website, you guys go to her website, you will see a collage on the main page of her website with an ashtray, chopsticks, pearls, a camera, a laptop, <laughs> and it and then it says And Carrie Bradshaw. And yeah, and then it says <laughs> and it says, um, I was thinking is it about love or is it about sex? I mean, it's very... It sounds like a narrative yeah. of sex in the city. Exactly. Yeah. And then she's like, that's when I was inspired to write my book. And then she does like a blurb about the book. But it's like, you're trying so hard to be her. Right, right, right. But you've yeah. got to go look at this picture. It's like so like, she grabbed every cool thing she could think of in her apartment and put it in the little thing. Right. Well, we mentioned last week that because she now has, has the... Um, Okay, so now that she has the um, TV show that probably will be on air, yeah, you know, and it's about sex and love in the city and everything, that it could definitely clearly mirror yeah, that. I don't, I don't know if there's anything undercover about her Carrie Bradshaw anymore. Yeah, I think no, she's now no. overcover. Pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah. Um, well, and uh, we're going to go to commercial in a second, but um, I did want to let you guys know that there's an awesome new iTunes app that yeah. you can download. It's free, and it organizes and stores all of your subscriptions to your podcasts. Oh, so you cool. can keep all of us wrapped up in a cute little bow right inside your phone. Aww. So if you download it, um, it's just going to help you stay organized, and uh, it's a really functional, good app. And again, it's free. So on that note, I think we're going to go to commercial. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about a few more things, and then we'll go into a couple segments. And uh, and yeah. Holla. Holla. Hey there, good buddies. The handle's Wooly Bear. I'm a truck driving man, but I'm not that old school kind of truck driving man. No, I like to listen to podcasts while I'm driving through these great United States of ours. And my favorite podcasts in the world are from AfterBuzz TV. And why? Because <laughs> AfterBuzz TV is like a post-game wrap-up show for all your favorite TV shows. Like Jersey Shore, Dancing with the Stars, Mad Men, and a whole truckload more. I like listening to my Gossip Girl podcast, catching up with all my fellow fans and getting all the latest news and gossip. You know, I got some strong opinions. And AfterBuzz TV lets me share those opinions with thousands of other listeners. Holy, what a feeling. I used to doze off on those lonely stretches of road. And don't worry, I got the cruise control. 
but now I'm wide awake and listening to all the After Buzz TV goodness. <laughs> Check them out. Give them a holler. And tell them the old woolly bear sent you. Hey, you guys. Welcome back from the Wild West. You are here with uh, three awesome hosts discussing The Real Housewives of New York, Season 5, Episode 6. Um, back to what we were chatting about, which was the night um, in the penthouse. We didn't see much. Hopefully next week there's more with the bidet. But moving moving on from the bidet or the penthouse, um, I want to talk about Ramona and Aviva a little bit. But yes. Ramona specifically, um, also mirroring Sex in the City because she gave a speech at the annex, at the learning annex, mm -hmm. which Carrie Bradshaw did as well. I wouldn't compare <laughs> Ramona to Carrie. Yeah, no. But she gives this quote unquote like talk or whatever on how to succeed. And <laughs> we only got, you know, this could be due to the editing, but we only got two lines from her and they were the exact same line so same it was the twice. same line twice which was if I can do it you can do it if I can do it you can do it and the other thing that was kind of irritating to me about that whole segment is that they did the whole Ramona's running around she's running late because she's trying to find a place to use the bathroom beforehand and it's like we've already seen the running late for the speech thing at Sonia's thing with right. the gay and lesbian center it's <laughs> like don't try to pull the same card twice we've already been there done that right 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 and you know it's fixed and so set up so I thought that was stupid yeah yeah I agree um we also had the issue with the table oh. uh, do you think that was real no does anyone not. say the words They're I repeat myself drama. by the way what was that Ramona was like I repeat myself does anyone say that ever is that even grammatically correct she's like I repeat myself <laughs> if I can do it you can do yeah. it yeah I no, don't think it, that's grammatically I correct. guess I think, <laughs> grammatically I think it would be I'll yes repeat or myself. allow me to or yeah. like please let right. me repeat my, something right. anything or I'm gonna right. say it again right. but, however in her defense that table did look better the second it table did, it did look, look better. better. Yeah, it did look better. If it was natural, then good for her for yes. sticking up for herself. I don't have the balls to do that kind of stuff. I'd be like, okay, if it's a small table, okay, or oh, whatever. She um, doesn't really say nice things to people that are employees of service. No, places. and that's what—that's the thing. What's it's that like, all about? If you came from nothing, remember the people that are also nothing. Thank which you. Which you need to treat them a little bit. Did she come nicer. from nothing? Was she a self-made woman? Well, apparently her. They didn't have that much, I don't think, but basically her backstory is that her father was really abusive toward her mother, and her mother was stuck with her father because she had no source of income. And the one thing that her mother always expressed to Ramona was to be able to sustain, your, sustain yourself. So, mm -hmm. um, so basically, Ramona has, her whole life, had the goal to have money so that she never had to stay with a man because of that. Hmm. So, you know, she takes that seriously, but um, she said people, in, the, in a side interview, she said, People call me controlling, but I call myself a successful businesswoman. Yeah. But it's like, yes, you're the only one who calls yourself <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. Like, we get it. Yeah. Not, yeah, a lot of people do call me controlling. Um, I don't see how she succeeded that much in business, though. I don't know how she could have done it. I guess she did it, but I can't really see it. I can't close my eyes she and picture that happening. Can. That's all she says. Yeah, but where, I guess it's true. Where are you in the success spectrum when you're lecturing at the Learning Annex? Which has been mentioned before. Remember when Heather, when they met together at Heather's yes. office and Heather right. said, if I were on the Learning Annex cover, I would be questioning my career, not right, bragging exactly. about yeah, it. Bragging about exactly. it. And, and I'm just, and I'm not making a judgment. I'm actually asking, like, I don't know where the Learning Annex rates, because I remember <laughs> that I think Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and City does that as well. So I'm like, what, yeah. what is that? I, well, I mean, if you, deal? I that, don't think so. I mean, if you look at the venue, it was like a Holiday Inn and a, you know, like yeah, a it was couple. The, it was the Nassau Banquet Room at, at some hotel. It said right. Nassau Banquet Room 1. And not all the <laughs> chairs were, were full. Yeah. So Nassau isn't that Long Island? Yeah. Oh my God, it wasn't even in Manhattan. Yeah. It's embarrassing. <laughs> oh oh my God. Well, uh, poor. You know, I feel bad for Ramona in a sense because I feel like she's just been ousted so badly in the season. But um, well, she's making herself look absolutely crazy. She is. She is. And I think her not being fired from the season and the other woman being fired, I think that really went to her head and her eyeballs. <laughs> Um, so speaking and they of stuck eyeballs, her eyeballs, right? So let's talk about Aviva's leg reveal to Ramona. Oh my God! Um, and Ramona, I, I made the I just quick observation for all those people keeping track. It was the eight minute mark. Is that a new record for Aviva mentioning her leg? It was, oh, it was the, the eight, eight minute mark in the episode. That might be a new record. I don't know. I think well, I think it was only made a record because they didn't show Aviva till eight minutes in. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, well. When Aviva revealed how real looking her leg was, Ramona's eyes went crazy. But if I was Aviva, I'd be like, "Are those real eyes?" Yeah. Like, are what those was that prosthetics? reaction though? What was that reaction? Honestly, it was. That's what, really good. Is it editing that she just holds it that long and she just she just consistently her eyes just bug out and they held that for like a good two three minutes? What what is that reaction? It's crazy. 
It's, what is that? I think they're milking that. I think they're, it's so funny and entertaining that like these eyes can't be real. So I think Why can't awesome. Ramona bring herself to understanding that, that th that's possible, that you can have a prosthetic leg, that it could have makeup I on it? I will say it in Ramona's defense, it's a real ass looking leg. No, you it's don't great. see yeah, legs no, that look like... Absolutely. And she has the money to be able I, to maintain those. If it were like from, you know, in my family, we'd have a wooden peg. Yeah, if that. Yeah. So, I mean, it is impressive. So when Aviva gets a little bit perturbed... If that's if I'm saying that perturbed. Correct, or perturbed, thank you. If she's if she gets a little bit thrown off that someone can't believe her leg, it's like, well, you're you're not living in everyone else's world who doesn't see this every day. Right. So I don't think Aviva should be that like thrown off by by well, that. Isn't also can it also be said that she can't be thrown off by that by when she makes it such a point to mention that here and there? So you either are very silent about it and try to keep it on down low completely and allow people to come up with their own uh, you know reactions to it, or you talk about it and you don't freak out when everybody reacts to it. Does right. that make sense? Right, right. Definitely, definitely. Um, I had a theory that Ramona saw the leg at the very, very beginning of the season before they started filming, and her eyes bugged out, and then they just kind of stayed that way. They like, froze. <laughs> right, I right. think that maybe that was the first scene they filmed all season. That right. might be. Now, in, R in Ramona's defense, I thought her Heather impersonation, did anyone else start so knee-slapping at the Heather impersonation? I really thought it was good. spot on. That was phenomenal. Yeah, it was really good. She's I like, read Heather, it. with that pageant smile, yeah. and yeah. that... Hey. And, and she does that thing. I, I can't even oh do God. it, but it was she, phenomenally well done. She was well done. phenomenal at it. I read an article that commented saying, oh, wow. Yeah. It was good. That it was, was good. really She's good. Funny. Good for I her. Like her. Yeah. No, that was actually a really a, a nice, genuine moment for her. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're kind of getting a little bit behind schedule, so hmm. I'm going to go a little bit quicker and just kind of blow through a few Fly. things. Um, uh, Heather, in her interview, did a good job. The woman, I wanted to say this, the woman who interviewed her sound just like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I was like, is that Robin Williams? <laughs> I think she was Welsh. He was hit by Run by Fruity. He, I mean, it was identical to Mrs. Doubtfire. I couldn't understand it. And Heather managed to look like she understood what was yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Good for her. For right. Um, and then, uh, let's see, just as we finish this up, Aviva and Ramona had dinner together. Um, I think Aviva is still very two-faced. Um, and yes. So anyway, I think she's two-faced. I think that Aviva? it's going to come Definitely. out more and more, but she keeps saying, oh, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think we are going to go into predictions. Predictions. And now, yeah. you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. I was kind of just uh, doing like miniature predictions, but now this is the official predictions. Official predictions, okay. Yeah. Um, we definitely are going to see stuff between Luann and Carol, yes? Yeah. Yes. That was, I think that's right on it. Yeah. Do yeah. you think it's going to get heated, or do you think they were editing it to maybe make it look more exciting than it was? I think it'll be snarky, not heated, because I can't imagine Carol like raising her tone, but I could imagine her being like, I'm going to outsmart you and outsnark you. Right. Well, there um, was a shot where, when they were playing whatever game they were playing, um, Lu Luann was like, come on, or, you know, hurry up, what are you doing? And Carol looked up and just kind of gave her like de a death stare. Mm -hmm. Like, bitch, if you keep pushing me. It was kind of one of those. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it builds and blows a little bit. And it would be awesome if we had Carol on next week where if there was some drama, we could chat with her about it. That would be really exciting. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully yeah. she will. Um, Heather also was like saying, um, I think Carol doesn't like remote or I don't think Carol likes Luann. Um, so I don't know if Heather's going to get involved because I think she was speaking up a little bit about it. Yeah. But maybe we could see Heather involved. Um, <laughs> lastly, I just want to say also... Um, Heather and Ramona are definitely going to have a blow up. Like when you pop a zit, I hope so. This is the main main moment. I hope so. That's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah, in gross. this corner. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, well, if um, you guys want to tune in next week, um, we'll be back at the same time Tuesday at 9 p.m. Um, otherwise, download us um, on iTunes and watch us on YouTube. And um, again, you can follow us on Twitter and um, check out our stuff. But you can follow me at um, twitter.com slash Kristen Carney, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-A-R-N-E-Y. And you can follow me at Molly Comedy, M O L L Y Comedy. And you can follow me at Yerman Gur, Y E R M A N G U R. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.